Hey guys, today I thought I'd come out and we would make a, um, an updated version of my Make It 300 Blackout. Uh, kind of consolidate and kind of update and modernize this and make a better video. So, let's get to it. We're going to use the, th we're going to use the Lee Power Quick Trim to do this. And we're going to, I'm going to show you the modifications you're going to have to make and, and how to hold the tolerances tight so that we get a good process. This also uses the Lee Quick Trim die for the 300 Blackout. Okay, so let's start by talking about the chop saw. This, you've seen these out there. This is nothing special. This is just a Harbor Freight mini cutoff saw. Um, these are about 30 bucks at Harbor Freight. You probably get them on coupon. In, chucked up in this, I've got a jig. This is a Squirrel Daddy jig. There's a bunch of different guys making these jigs. Uh, I'm not going to recommend one over the other, but you do need something to establish a stock for your brass so that you get the same cut length every time. Cut length is going to be critical to using this process. So I'll make that, that part very, very clear. Okay, so before we get too deep into this, one thing I want to talk about is I want to talk about the brass. There is brass out there that has um, a little bit too thick of wall in, the, in this area right here, which is going to be our new neck on a 300 Blackout brass. So um, the guys over at 300black.com have put together a pretty comprehensive list of brass head stamps and which ones will give me that under 13,000's neck I need uh, once I'm formed and finished. You don't want to have to trim down your, or trim your necks down. That's your only other alternative if your neck wall is too thick in this area. So um, I'll put a link up later on. We'll, we'll cover that a little bit more. Okay, so now one of the key things here is when you size the brass, when you, whether you're doing a 223 size or a 300 blackout size or forming, this brass is going to is going to get a little bit longer. So when I trim this brass, I'm going to cut to 1.360, pretty close, as close as I can. And that's the hardest part of this process is getting this little jig set up just right so that you can make that cut at 1.360. Um, that that took me a little bit. Uh, that's why I say if somebody had an adjustable head on here where you could just fine tune where the stop is, that would even make this process better. Okay, so I'm going to try to. Um, I'm going to try to reach around the camera here and cut this brass, and I'm just going to do five of them and show you how quick that this can be done. Okay, there's five for us to work with, just to show you the process. These cut pretty fast, I don't think you can argue with that. So here I am sitting 1.360. Now when I size these, these are going to grow probably out 10 thousandths, and then we're, that'll give us some trim room when we use our trimmer. Okay guys, I'm over at the turret press, and we're getting set up. I just want to show you that I'm not doing any kind of deburring there. That's exactly uh, how it came off of the saw. I just run them like that, I try to eliminate... Uh, and only do the necessary steps. Try to eliminate as many unnecessary steps as possible. Now, I'm going to be using this Imperial Sizing Wax, and I think this stuff is fantastic. I, I really like it. Um, I you know, keep experimenting with different stuff, and so far this is the one I've liked the best. I haven't had any stuck cases since I've been using this stuff. Okay, so just a, just a little bit about the dies here. This is the Lee uh, 300 Blackout die set. I'm going to be using the full-length sizing die on that. Uh, one thing I want to say about that is some folks with this sizing die have not had the best of luck. Um, this is a sizing die. It is not a forming die. So it does not push, it does not uh, form the brass all the way down to the minimum chamber dimension. So some folks have trouble with this uh, working in their case gauges or brass that they've made with this die working in their case gauges. This has worked for me for a long time. I haven't had any issues. A lot of people have good luck with it. But if you, um, if you want the sure thing, the RCBS small base die, forming die, um, sizes the brass all the way down, as, as near as I can tell, all the way down to the minimum chamber or brass dimension. And that seems to work for pretty much everybody. I haven't heard anybody not have, have a failure with that. So anyway, I'll put that out there. So with this case lube, you just get, a, just get a little bit on there like this, work it in.
There you go. And see, that edge is a little rough, but it's a well-formed piece of brass, and it works for our purpose. So that's one. I'm just going to go ahead and do five for you, just to show you, you know, kind of get a feel for the speed, if this is something you want to try or not. I do have this, the um, neck expander pin in there as well. This is not taking any force. And if I wasn't working around the camera, I could have done that about twice as fast. So there you go, guys. There's the, the brass. You can see the necks are a little uneven on them. They don't always come out the same. And that's why it's nice to have a little bit of room to trim. I'm going to go ahead and show you how long these are. You saw that we cut them. So that one's about yeah, six thousandths, right, depending on where you measure. Six, eight. Nine. Okay, so anyway, I just want to show you that so you can see that they actually grow a little bit. And now let's uh, let's move on to the quick trim die. Okay, guys, so this is the Lee Power Quick Trim, and uh, this this is a multi-caliber tool. Now the dies are caliber dependent, so this is a 300 blackout. Uh, if you get 223, you have to get these individually for the calibers you want to do. But this is supposed to work on all the different calibers. Now, when, I first, when they first came out with the system, I thought, oh, this is going to be great. This is going to work perfect. I'll be able to trim all my brass uh, real simple and, and cost effective. But what I found out was this didn't work out of the box. And, and so it took a while. At first, I put it in a box, and I got mad and thought it was a piece of junk. And, and then I started working with it a little bit, pulled it back out, and started thinking about how to make it better and actually came up with a simple way to make this work. So that's what we're here here to do today. Now when you get this, it's going to come out, it'll look like this. And this is the power driver that, that you can use with some a drill driver or something that uh, provides a rotation. This part right here is a spacer, and this is used for the rifle calibers. So the, the blackout instructions tell you to take this spacer off. So, and then additionally, inside here, it comes with a 3 8 ball. So this 3 8 ball is made to put extra tension on the springs. And, and by doing so, it puts extra tension on these, um, these cutter blades. These are, these are the blades that do your chamfering. This is the actual dimension cut, and then this is the part that chamfers in and out. So, the directions tell you to take this ball out. But what I found was, especially when you're trying to use this as a cut down brass, these chamfer bits didn't have enough oomph to them. In fact, I think the outside had too much and the inside didn't have any at all. And I attribute part of that to the fact that, if you can see that, we're kind of cone shaped on the inside. They want you to just put this back together like this. But that didn't work either. I didn't get the result I was looking for. So what I came up with, was reducing the bearing size down to a quarter inch. So I engage these inner springs. If I can see that. And, um, and that seems to be just about right. So I've, I've also used an airsoft BB uh, with good result as well. I'm just, uh, I just wanted the metal one. We found these on uh, eBay for, I think it was a pack, a 25 pack for 99 cents. So it's just a small quarter inch uh, steel bearing. We're going to put that in there. And now, um, see I've got a little more tension on this inner one, and that's where I wasn't getting enough chamfer to do, to do the whole piece of brass in one shot like I wanted. Um, this here is the adjustment ring. And this has 10 clicks to it. 
it's a thousand of an inch in each clit, all the way this way is longest. If I rotate it this way, it's the shortest. Now there's a little stop, I don't know if you can see it, right in here. And if you, if you go too hard, which is easy to do because it's stiff, it'll, it'll pop up on that stop and it kind of separates. And the uh, first one I did, I broke it right away, um, came apart, and it just wouldn't go back together. Now the good news is, Lee offers it, all these parts online. This part right here is in there, listed in their blow, I think it's called blow molded parts, in the drop down box. And you can order these for about 70 cents. They're not expensive at all if you need to replace it. You need new blades for this or anything. Okay, so now what I'm driving it with is this little um, impact driver. And it just fits in here like this. You can actually you know, pull this and lock it in there. I like it loose because it, it gives a little bit of, it gives drive, but it doesn't lock tight to it like a drill would. Um, and I think that has benefit in terms of letting the cutter find its own um, center, basically. One thing I really like about this is it's long and it fits tight in here so that it squares itself, which gives you a real nice square neck when you're done. Trim it. And so I like to put a little bit of oil here, you know, just a, just a dab, just so that runs and doesn't create friction on top here. I'm going to go ahead and set this up. I can get my Oh, one last thing, this, this actually runs at about 2,000 RPMs. Uh, it's, a, it's a lot faster than they intend for you to use this. I use it. I don't have any trouble with it. They want you to use something more in a screwdriver type speed. But I like it to go fast. I hold this for about two seconds. And I don't know if you can see that. But that's a pretty nice case. Now I'm sitting a little bit long there, so I'm going to back that off about 3,000. Let me show you how to do that. So I'm all the way this way at the longest, so I'm just going to rotate this back about three notches. And we're going to do that again. And the longer you hold it on there, the more it's going to more it's going to chamfer those edges for you too. Let's measure that now. See what we got. 1.35859 looks pretty good to me. So now I've got my original five. I'm just going to go through one at a time and show you how fast this is. I'm not putting a lot of downward pressure here, it's pretty much just the weight of the drill driver. Again, a little hard working around the camera here. So you can sit down and do a pile of brass pretty quick doing this. You see that light chamfer there inside and out. And again. Okay guys, quick review. So you want to select brass, check those head stamps, go to 300black.com, look at the list the guys put together. You want to make sure that your under 13 thousandths. If you're over that, this is too wide, it may stick in some of the chambers. It'll give you fits good and all the way in the battery. Two, Trim your brass down to the as close to the final length as you can without going under. Give yourself just a little bit of trim there. This is a trimmer. It's not necessarily to machine off a bunch of a bunch of brass. And in order to use this, which it works fine, but we got to help it out a little bit. If you start getting chattering up in here, this thing starts chattering. It'll give you a rough rough neck, and that's usually because you're trying to cut too much brass for this process. Um, with the cutter. Change the ball out. Put a quarter inch ball in there. That gives you a much better ten tension on these uh, on these chamfer bits. Use a use a good sizing wax, like this imperial sizing wax. 
Um, that seems to be the best one I've found yet. With the, with the dies, remember that this is a sizing die, it is not a forming die. The closest one on the market that I'm aware of is the RCBS small base die. That is the closest to a forming die um, that you can use for both sizing and forming. Um, I went ahead and left my pin in there. You can see it. And this process works good for me. So I hope you like this. I hope this uh, works for you. Some folks have had good luck with it so far, and that's why I wanted to update this video and make it a little bit better. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you back here next time.